Right, ready? Yeah. A bit of crank in? Yeah. Hello and welcome back to part four of the V6 conversion. This is Dave, my 1991 MR2, and this is a three litre one MZ out, out of a Toyota Camry. Fingers crossed, we actually get it running in this video. That is the goal. I'm going to introduce a new friend uh, in, onto the camera. That is Nick. He is the guy that has the big bushy beard. Uh, Nick is a long term Patreon and supporter of the channel, and he, I've known him now many years. Um, you've probably seen him before in little clips of videos and when I took, took the car to track, that sort of thing. Nick's been on a few videos before and he is going to be on the videos uh, quite a bit more coming, going forwards. Uh, another person that I'd like to introduce to you is Paul Woods who will be on the phone. Um, when later on in the video there is an issue with the MR2, you'll hear Paul on the phone. Paul is Paul Woods from Woodsport who owns Woodsport who is the, the, the guru of V6 conversions. He knows absolutely everything about these cars, everything about the V6 conversion and all the different versions of the V6 that you can drop in these. Uh, we have to call on him for his advice, his expertise. Um, and that, I want to introduce, he is the main sponsor of these of these MR2 videos. Uh, all his links for his website and who he is will be in the description and they'll be popping up on the screen as well. So without further ado, let's crack on with this video. So we've just fitted the new rocker cover gaskets in here. Uh, it was much easier to set the inlet manifold off, otherwise it would be a pain in the ass to try and squeeze that rocker cover out. Uh, also put a new PSV valve on. PCV valve, even, not PSV. That's my uh, work head on. Um, going to do the spark plugs while we've got access to it, put the inlet manifold back on, and then it's ready to start in about so, 10 hours. So, completely by accident, I managed to buy exactly the same spark plugs that was already in it, because I had no idea what was already in it. So we've got NGKs. BKR6s is what was in it, and that's what was already in. Uh, been in a while. Uh, Nick spotted a bit of uh, wearing away on one of the electrodes somewhere, and we can see we've had a bit of oil sat around one as well. But oh no, nice new brand, shiny new ones to go in. While I'm on it, I have an oil filter and lots of oil, and then the gearbox oil over there to go in it as well. So lots of fresh stuff to go. There's in. been a bit of gap in the filming because. As I started putting things together, I realised I was missing some coolant hoses and fuel hoses. So, the original MR2 fuel hose that goes from the uh, fuel filter all the way down there that goes to the engine, uh, I had accidentally sent it on the other engine. So, I could not connect it up. I now have them. Don't know where they are in my garage at this moment in time, but I do have them. Uh, they've been sent back to me, which is very nice, of the, of the person who had the engine. Uh, and then I've got all these things on here. So we've got transmission fluid, then we've got engine oil, got uh, obviously oil filter, we've got clamps for the CV joints because I know they're loose. Obviously we've got the poly bush mounted in the uh, engine mount ready. Then we've got, this is the coolant hoses for the heater matrixes. I'll chop it in two and that'll make me two hoses. Then I've got some silicon hose, uh, 32 mil, that's a meter long, which I can cut down to size. 32 mil bend, 32 mil metal bend, and then two 32 mil uh, couple of bits, and then all the clamps for that, uh, and a tool obviously to do all the clamps. So all of that needs to be fitted, as well as a fuel pressure regulator, which I've got somewhere in the garage. That obviously needs to go into the fuel lines. Uh, once all that's on, we'll be a hell of a lot closer to be able to start it. I've got a long way to go. The first thing I need to do is get the car in the air. I need to get that engine mount on. That needs to be the first thing I do. I need to get this engine mount on, mounted, so then it's fully uh, fixed. I also need to find where these freaking fuel hoses are. They'll be in a box that I brought in and put on a shelf, out of the way, just to keep things tidy. That's what you do. That's what you do when you, when you have a garage. You just put stuff down and they can never find where it is. Oh, it's in the car, or it's in the boot. It is not either of them. No, it's not in there. I don't think it's in the car. Uh, oh, there's a fuel pressure regulator. Oh, look at Dave, he's so mouldy. Um, but I have the fuel hoses to find somewhere. And obviously they get fitted. Let's see if I can get in this car. Just doing a few bits and bobs on the MR2. Uh, first thing I've done is I've connected the gear linkages. 
uh, obviously one and two. Uh, we still have the slave cylinder hanging at the bottom at this moment in time. The engine mount is part partly fitted. I think because I've got the engine kind of canted over a little bit, with it being up in the air, I'm struggling to get two of the bolts in. So that's going to stay like that for this moment in time. But it's it's fitted, it's just not actually attached to the engine, if that makes sense. Or not securing it, shall I say. I've uh, just been doing the ECU. I sped up, I've seen the looms and that dangling everywhere. So I've literally just been bolting everything in, put it out of the way. Still wondering where some of the plugs goes to. But I do keep finding plugs and finding where plugs go. There's another plug there, look. What's that one for? Does it go in that? No. I have no idea. Uh, I did originally get told what they were all for, but I can't remember what they are. That might be something to do with OBD. It looks like an OBD port. Because the original OBD1 port is still in the engine bay. Somewhere there. But that is the OBD2 one, I believe, from the Lexus. So that means I can plug in for the actual engine, which is nice. Um, EC was mounted. What's this one? This is the EC immobiliser. Let's see if we can put that somewhere or at least tuck it out of the way. There might be another bolt I can attach it to. There's another plug down there, look. This is part of the loom. Uh, so this has come out of the uh, Lexus. It has the chip, the key transponder, as well as the immobiliser stuff and the immobiliser ECU. I'd, I've got told if you ever want to immobilise the car, if you just remove this, take it away from the car, the car will never start. So, interesting snow, interesting safety feature. Although I'm pretty sure most V6 owners probably have it in the boot just like I've that. I've slaved so. away on these th seven bolts for six months. That's how long I've been doing this engine mount for. But engine mount is attached, bolts are tight. Um, engine is technically secure for the first time in ever. Um, I actually adapted a roof light. Oh, look how dinted that is. Look. Oh dear, look at that, that's well bent. My sill's really bent down here, Nick. Uh, Nick. What is? My sill. Oh dear. Obviously, it's been repaired. Obviously, I've, I've never jacked up on it, but yeah, it, it's it's very uh. Yeah. Oh dear. Can you see it? Where well, I don't know where you are. Is is this bit? Yeah. Is oh. that your head? Is that a bang? No. Where are you? Okay. Yeah, this bit, oh, you can't see it back. Oh, yes, I can. oh, yes. Yeah, it's bent up, and obviously it's split there. And I can see where it's previously yeah, been welded see, back you on. You can see a weld inside the wheel arch. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because that's, that's not a structural fail, or it's not structural at all, is it? It's just, oh, no, it's not a fail. But, uh, it's a bit bent a bit further forward as well, isn't it? All here? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah it's pretty bent. Hammer yes, <laughs> I like using hammers. Right, next thing. Um... I don't know. I can't remember how the clutch assembly goes. I can see where the lever is. It is there. I can't see where it bolts unless it bolts onto here. I'll have a look. That might be the next thing I do. So to show you what I've been doing, especially now the camera's just charged. Here's this extra earth that you can see. My pathetic gloves are already ripped. It goes down here, connects onto this little bolt here. It was all cleaned up. This was obviously all cleaned up as well. So that's earth to the body, and it's also got this additional earth, which is obviously earth, earth to the body. That is as Paul's recommendations. So that's good. Uh, I have connected that one onto there, and that one onto there. There was a bolt missing out of there, which holds this uh, frame bracket thingy, so that's in. So I've already told you about the other earth at the bottom. Now we move on to the fuel lines. That's for the MAF sensor. That's fine, they're all plugged in. I've got a little plug down here. Not found out where that goes as of yet. Because there's nothing there. I removed the airbox, I removed the side panel earlier to give me access to these earths. This is give me more room. And what I've done is I've cut out a bit of the firewall as you can see there. And I've just drilled two holes and tapped them with the M6 thread. And I've got two very small bolts, which is gonna allow me to mount that bracket there onto the back. And then I can run the fuel lines to it and that's the fuel pressure regulator out of the way. So I'll get this mounted and then we can start looking at the lines. And the lines has been made a lot easier. Now Paul's explained exactly what I need to do. But let's get this mounted first and then we'll move on to the lines. And there we have one fuel pressure regulator mounted in its new home. 
next step would be to uh, sort out the lines. So the pipe out the bottom is the uh, fuel return, which I have seen. This is it. So I just need to connect this into the bottom of there. Uh, I can have the fuel line that comes from the filter, which is just down there, come straight up into this left hand side. And the fuel that comes out on this right hand side will go and join up to this. We chop this in half, put a new bit of hose on it and connect it onto there. Uh, I have a new piece of hose up there and some clamps and stuff like that. And that with the fuel done. So that is my next step. <laughs> oh, everything's moving. Everything moves. Damn it. Why did we change this before putting the engine in? <laughs> when it was really accessible. Good question. <sighs> No. Nope. I have crap in my eye. Fuck. Um, big grips. Oh, there's no oil left in this. Oh, we've got to put the blue roll. And it's angled. Oh, it's angled to go into the engine. So theoretically, should be empty. So far, so good. And I'm looking straight at it. So. <laughs> What are you after? Up Second draw? Yeah, it's a needle nose. The big ones aren't in there? Nope. Uh, I will come out and have a look. Yeah. Me and Nick's been trying to figure out how to do the fuel system. Obviously, earlier on in the video, I attached the regulator to the bulkhead, which was an absolute pain in the ass to do because it's freaking got Allen key bolts so I couldn't freaking fit them. We are going to run the MR2's original fuel line from the filter up to one side of the regulator. And then out the other side, we've got the line. Where is it? It's lying loose somewhere. Where's the actual Camry bit? This one here from the Camry, which we're going to chop off. We're going to put that connector in, fresh bit of hose, and then run that hose to the other side of the regulator. And then the last but not least, is it that one? That's the one. Yeah. That is the MR2's return line because the Camry doesn't have a return line, but the MR2 does. This gets somehow. It looks weird, this, doesn't it? Because it's like got a sleeve on it. Yeah. But if somehow I make that fit and it attaches to the bottom of the regulator, then that's the fuel side done. In theory. <laughs> Not confident. In theory, that would be the fuel side done. So we'll get that uh, all done in, in five seconds and yeah. We'll the Obligatory bit. camera shot of new and old filter. Uh, the inside is exactly the same, but the outside is a lot bigger. And Nick says that gives it more filtery goodness. So we're on for a winner. Now I'm going to put that on. Clean up the mating surfaces like you would do every single time. Fresh bit of oil. Time to put it on. Nick says he's plumbed up the fuel. Oh, it looks plumbed. Oh, you've even done the bottom one as well, the return. Uh-huh. Well done. Plumbed to death. Fire it up. Er... <laughs> uh, once we've got the oil filter on, we can obviously top it up with oil. That's a job to do, but we've still got the coolant hoses to do. Um, we could technically start it without, but I'd rather just get it plumbed up. And I need to find the things for the pipes underneath. But the joys. So screwing on the oil filter. Nick's currently attaching the fuel line to the actual filter. Um, and Nick just pointed out saying the battery is connected and on charge and I went yes and obviously he's trying to not electrocute himself by connecting the positive on the starter motor to any of the metal on the car and welding the spanner permanently to it yeah especially with you know, a fuel line <laughs> so I'm just gonna hand tighten this on well we've got instructions or apply clean engine oil to seal screw on filter until seal contacts face tighten two-thirds of a turn Fill engine with correct quantity of oil, run engine at idle for three minutes and check for leaks. Okay. There's about your two thirds of a turn. We're on. We're not on. We're on. We're not on. I don't think we're on. You know, because it's bigger, I'm not actually cons I'm not actually sure it's on. Oh. Um, I'm actually going to have to get a proper torch in to have a look. You've just seen mm. that I fitted the new bigger filter. Now, as much as uh, I agree with Nick, it would have been really good for the engine because it has more filtery goodness in it. 
because it's so big, it fouls on the engine, uh, on the on the outside of the block without actually sealing. So as luck would have it, I happen to have a man filter, um, which is the exact same filters I use on the two JZ engines when I had the Supras and the Lexus, uh, and I put that on instead. So it's the same size as the one I've took off, which is not on there because it's in the bin which is a box of rubbish stuff down there. Um, but it's the same size as the original one took off, so we don't get to use this good good one, but all I did was put uh, fresh oil on the seal, so I'll save it for another day, might fit on another engine at some point. Um, obviously I can't send it back anymore. It's a shame because it would have been good, but that's now on. So we've now got a man filter on, but a brand new filter on the And it's predominantly because of Nick, because I've actually been in the house skiving. Um, Nick's connected, we've got coolant hoses, he's reused the ones that were already on the car, because they're actually some aftermarket ones, just trimmed them up, with a bit that I bought, I think that's right, because that's the connector that I bought, but I think that's the... Was that the 90 degree that I bought as well? Yes. And then he just trimmed off the leg. Yeah. But then, so but that's the original bit that was on the car. Yeah. And then you the bit that you had trimmed off, we've actually used on the bottom bit down there. That's right. Yeah. Top one is... The one that was on the bottom. <laughs> the one that was on the bottom. There we are. So obviously that's that bit connected. These are bits of hose that I bought. Just, just connect them straight in. Fingers crossed that should be fine. Fuel's already done, as you can see, it's all connected. Uh, mass airflow from the Camry's box. Uh, Nick butchered it from the box and has made it fit and work. Um, Paul Woods did give us, where's that little patch lead gone? Yeah. A patch lead to obviously extend from the original loom to this. Don't know, there's obviously a reason why, but we uh, don't currently know the reason why, because maybe maybe the, maybe they position the mass flow further away, awesome. I don't know. But obviously we'll save it, but at the moment it's on the normal plug. Um, there's no water in it, there's no coolant in it at this moment in time. About to put some oil in it and see if we can prime up the fuel and then we might give it a start with no coolant. See if we can get it running and knock it off. Um, we don't know if there's any leaks at that point, but I'd rather hear it start. <laughs> I'd rather hear it start, wouldn't you? It's been many, many, many months. What is that one? Oh, it's a dark rear. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what's that down there? Yeah, throttle cable. Yeah, we need to make a bracket just to extend and pull that out. Um, Just, yeah, we'll sort that out. But other than that, that doesn't stop us starting it. Uh, Let's get some oil um, in it. We found a funnel. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little gloop and see what it actually does. Is that going in? I can't see it coming out, so yeah. I think one for a winner. Let's do it. Oh, look at this. It's like liquid gold. It makes a funny noise. The Ooh, bottles. Oh no! I dribbled. <laughs> Was it a bit too fast? Carried away, maybe. <laughs> bit too fast. She was carried away and dribbled everywhere. I was fascinated by the noises it's making. So, Ian, one click, two click. I think next one's start. Yeah. I didn't hear a fuel pump. Yeah. Shall I see what it does? Can do. In case I'm one click off. But I think next one's start. I'll just stop if it freaking tries to start. Yeah. I don't think it's going to try to start. Woo. Oh, it did try and start. Well, that's good. At least the start motor's connected. Uh, yeah. And, it, and it, that little chirp sounded quite healthy. Yeah. But we have no fuel. Got no fuel. <sighs> have no fuel. So it could be an ECU thing, potentially. But Is as far as I'm aware, I've plugged them all in. Saying that, there is a little ECU box down here that I've seen earlier that says cooling fan, say so that one. Uh, there is a... Um... Is there a plug not connected? Hang on, I've got a key in. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case it did something, take the key out. I don't know what that is, but we'll plug it in. Well, it's... I yeah, why I've... That's part of the loom that he's made, so I presume it's important. The loom that he's made um, has the immobiliser on, cool. so that could potentially stop the fuel. Oh, try that. So, key, uh -huh. one click, two clicks. We have clicks from the fuse board, but no, no pump priming.
That's a transponder ring, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think we'll have to come back to this little bit of footage when we figure out why it's not priming. Because it's not priming. So, Nick's just read online that it won't prime without cranking. So, we've disconnected the igniter because I don't want it to try and start with piss poor fuel pressure. What's that? What? I dripped it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's oil. <laughs> Um, we want to try and get the fuel pressure up to make sure there's no leaks in the fuel lines, which I think is obviously a good thing to do. So I'm going to crank it for a bit. Hopefully that should build. I can't see that. Tell me if it builds. But fingers crossed it builds. I've also put the clocks in as well, just in case. You never know. At least now I can see we've got oil lights and stuff. Right, ready? Yeah. A bit of cranking? Yeah. Interesting. I tell you what, though, it sounds healthy. As yeah, it's it's trying to over quick, yeah. yeah, it's over really quick. It probably sounds like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like you'd say the air moving. All right, we'll come back again yeah, when we figure yeah, this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, 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 we've cranked, cranked before. All right, moving on. The loudest thing in the world. If it does fire, it will be the loudest thing in the world. If it does fire, Paul, I won't hear you, but I'll only leave it running for a matter of seconds. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ready to go? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm going to say, keys, the key's off. Yeah, yeah first fire! <laughs> Right, we just got to do some wiring repairs. Just got to figure out what's the wi wiring the, issue. 35 quid for a new kitchen switch. 35 quid for a switch. Just have a look online. Oh, fair dues. It sounds like a tank! <laughs> Let it run! Paul, it run! If you've got power going into that ignition switch but not out, then it can only be the ignition switch. Yeah, we have a faulty ignition switch. I think, I think that's I'm just going to try and start it again, Paul. Is that right? Yeah. Relay's Relay in. Relay's in. That's yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, I try and fire it again. So, on this time though, if I turn the key off, should it turn the. No, because you've no, still got the Jerry Wire to do the fuel. Yeah, yeah you got it. Permanent power. I got it. Um, right then, 3, 2, yeah. 1, go, I suppose. 3, 2, 1. <laughs> what an absolute weapon! <laughs> It runs full time. Yeah. Yeah. Until you take the wire off. Until you take so the wire off, the yeah. The ECU's all connected up then and that's yeah. all fine. So right, we've found the problem. Um faulty ignition switch, so you just need to dive on that side of things and find out what's going on. You are an absolute legend, Paul. Uh, the fact that you I can know. diagnose <laughs> it from hundred mile away. Yeah, well, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's this is my kung fu, remember, so um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, we found the issue. I've never seen an ignition switch go faulty just from standing, but yep, no, we have now. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll film it and film it. And... Can you do the little bevy, Bev? Because uh, yeah, but you have a look at your taco as well. Yeah. So it should fire. Right you now. can't see the taco. So um, this will be the last rev or last start up because I want to rev it and I want to hear what it sounds like, even more like a tank. I want to film it, film it on there, check the. Taco's working. That was it, really, wasn't it? <laughs> just hear it. Just hear a noise. Again. Um, loop, one, loop one, vroom, vroom. Loop what's big, vroom, vroom. Are you ready? <laughs> ready? Yeah. Yeah, I know. 
Wow! Okay, I think that was a job well done. It runs. It does. That was the, the yeah, I think everything else that I asked to do was a bit, yeah, we're not there. But it runs! I can just now come and plod along and do drive shafts and stuff yeah. like that. So you need an alternator and an ignition switch. Uh, yeah, you know, an alternator belt and the ignition switch because Chris cut the alternator belt. But to be yeah. fair, it was Christy anyway, but he cut it. Oh, um, so there you have it. We have a running 1MZ. There was ignition fault that was uh, diagnosed by Paul Woods, who's the main sponsor of these videos. Um, Woodsport org is the website he knows everything v6 related and probably more um on the mr2s he is the guru um you heard him on the phone in the video he just he just knows what goes where what should what things should look like what voltage you should be getting he just just do it he, he could diagnose it straight away got a faulty switch it's not kicking the power to the fuel pump that's why we're getting no pressure he told us which relays in the ignition box to jerry rig which was the fuel relay and the circuit i still forgot what it's called the circuit operating relay, we put a wire across two of them, connected the power into it from the power on the fuse box, that powered up the pump, that gave us pressure, turned it, literally on the first, first quick turn, boof, fired straight up. The engine's been sat for two years, it's been two years since that's been out, you know. Um, maybe slightly longer, because it was summer, and we're now in winter, so it might be two and a half years. Um, but it fired up straight away, fresh oil, fresh plugs, fresh rock cover gaskets, um, fresh stuff in it, it's just, it's just, <laughs> massive thank you to paul for his expertise and obviously paul wood's done all the wiring loom um they've got fuel regulator from him got the clutch from him got loads of bits and bobs just all everything you need for the conversion go to Woodsport and he will sort you out all you've got to do is source an engine and to be fair i'm pretty sure he could probably source you an engine if you ask really nicely it does have one mz's uh three mz's uh, I think he's doing some T2GR work as well and if you've just got any general questions regarding anything MO2, MR2, you'll probably know it. So there we are, the next video will probably be getting this moving under its own steam. Um, there's a seize brake caliper at this moment in time because the car's been stood for that long. So I'm going to have to do that. I've got to rebuild the drive shafts, put all this back together and connect to make things look pretty and fix ignition switch. Um, but that'll be the next part. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, Please check out uh, Paul and his link will be in the description for anything if you want to know anything on the V6s. Um, the next video will be on Subaru because I'm doing bits and bobs on the Subaru. And very soon we're going down a different format with a couple of extra people on the channel. Um, starting to do some new videos and new types of videos and hopefully uh, that'll be fun. Uh, more will be revealed about that uh, later down the line. But thank you for watching this. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.